Welcome back to Celebrity Radio. It's Alex Belfield talking to the stars of the biggest shows and some of my favourite people. And we've got one for you today. Danny Elizabeth, how are you? I'm um, great, thanks. Thanks for having me. You are delicious and stunning and you have a fabulous show called Crazy Girls, which is on at Planet Hollywood. I saw it the other night and I truly think it is the sexiest and most sensual show in Las Vegas. Congratulations. Ah, oh, thank you. That makes me very happy. I love being a part of it. And you, of course, are the host. I mean, it's your job to drive the whole thing, really. And they've given you this privilege. Is it half terrifying and half flattering? Oh, yes. It's all those things and so much more. I, you have to connect with people every night. So, and you never know who's going to be out there. So it's kind of like, OK, curtain opens and you just see what happens. And you've got this intimate showroom. I mean, literally, you can see the whites of everybody's eyes and we can see you up close and personal. And what's beautiful about this show, it's got that European class. I mean, it's based on the Paris Review, isn't it? It is. It is. Yes, it's a, a, a lot of old school burlesque and then some new items as well, newer music, uh, newer choreography. But uh, you are very up close and personal with everyone in our theater. But that can also work for me too, because I have that moment where I can make visual eye contact and connect with someone so that I can you know, see what their needs are and, and talk to them on a personal level. And as opposed to being so far back where I'm talking at people, I actually get to talk with them, which is, which is refreshing. I saw you years ago in Jubilee, which was, let's face it, the classiest show in Las Vegas. Everybody loved it and it closed, which was a great shame. And you got to be in it and do the last show. That must have been an amazing point of your career. Oh, that was so fantastic. It was, it was an amazing moment that very last night. So many emotions of happiness and sadness to see such an epic, iconic Las Vegas show uh, be ending, but also to be a part of it with all of the, the cast and the crew. I mean, there were hundreds of us that all worked in on that one particular show. And unlike the current show, uh, Crazy Girls, that show is in a very large theater. So many nights it felt like I was on stage and almost performing for, yeah, uh, like I was on TV, because you're not necessarily connecting with people. You know people are out there watching you, but you can't see everyone's face. So it's, it's really nice to be able to have that experience in Crazy Girls. And Norbert, who's producing this show, I mean, he's used a lot of the Jubilee girls who, let's face it, are stunning. You're all incredibly tall and incredibly slim and incredibly beautiful. That goes without saying, really. They're, they're the prerequisites to getting this gig. They really are. Nobera does like long legs and uh, great booties. So Jubilee definitely gave <laughs> gave us the good booties with all the stairs we had to climb in that show. So it has worked well for getting our job at Crazy Girls. Isn't it a shame there isn't a feather show around anymore? I mean, this is what Vegas was known for. There's the odd scene in the odd show here and there. They really ought to bring this back. And I know he'd like to. And those costumes are still hidden away somewhere. They are, they are, they're still hidden away, and that's the question that everyone keeps wondering. Are they gonna bring something else back? And if they do, is it going to be nearly as good as what Jubilee was? Because that's some hard shoes to fill right there. I know. And then let's talk about you and your physicality. How hard is it to remain stunning? It, to me, as an ugly guy, seems a lot of hard work. You're too kind. Um, I, luckily, I do enjoy working out, so that does help. Uh, but I do notice that when I don't work out, it does make my job harder. So I do everything from um, yoga and CrossFit and you know, swimming or whatever it is that week that I feel like getting in. But it does definitely help make the job experience a lot more enjoyable because, A, you feel good about yourself on stage and people pay good money because they want to see you look a certain way on stage. And, uh, and then it also makes the job easier physically. And my stamina is better if I'm taking care of myself. And in that respect, I can enjoy what I do even more. How do you get over the shyness, especially in Crazy Girls? As you said, the Jubilee Theatre is so big. But then we go to the intimacy of this other theatre at Planet Hollywood, which is glorious, perfect. There's this mirrored back wall as well, which adds another mm -hmm. element of sensuality to it. But you've got to have great confidence. How on those days when you're not feeling 100 percent do you stand on that stage? Well, my tactic is, you know, if I want to look, make make it look like I'm looking at someone so they feel that connection with me on stage, if you look just above their head, <laughs> sometimes it makes you feel a little bit more confident on stage so you don't have to necessarily have that eye contact, but when they're out there, they think that you are. <laughs>
<laughs> and the poster for this show is, of course, iconic. The asses across the strip are all over wherever you're promoted. That's the, the back shot is, is the famous thing for crazy girls. People come to Sin City for a bit of sin. And this is the naughtiness they're looking for, to see beautiful girls dancing and performing. And there's no seediness, which I think some people who haven't seen the show may think. Yes, that's correct. Uh, you know, I think 30, because the show is now 30, it turned 30 in October. So I think 30 years ago, when those were the original um, concepts and images that they were using, uh, that was the reputation that the show got. Because at the time, you know, to have all these girls wearing a G-string and seeing their backside, that was very scandalous. Uh, so today, I think that the show has moved out of that reputation a bit more because obviously there's a lot of other shows that are trying to meet that bar of raciness and sexy and all these uh, things that everybody wants to be when having a, a topless show on the strip but um, we have gorgeous dancers that are have been training their entire lives beautiful bodies uh, great fantastic classy women and so when they get up there on stage it just gives a different uh, demeanor to the overall show and you can feel the class. When you girls walk out, it's obvious that many of you have been in Jubilee. Fundamentally, firstly, you are a dancer. That's what you do. Yes. I've always been a dancer until the past year. And I started talking to people on stage, hosting, which has been a crazy experience, a lot of fun. I'm very grateful for the opportunity. So I don't think any other show would have allowed me to uh, uh, kind of experience the things that I'm doing, talking on a mic and connecting with people like I'm doing in Crazy Girls. And I'm very grateful that they approached me uh, and helped coach and guide me into doing this because it's been a lot of fun and I've learned a lot. And uh, I really, it's one of my favorite things because it's always changing. As a dancer, when you do your set tracks in a show, Sometimes it can get a little stagnant because you're always doing the same thing. But when you're talking to people, as you know, you have to stay present and connect. Right. So you, I have to remember I can't go on autopilot because it's never going to be the same person that I'll talk to on any given night. And I have to uh, connect with them. So, And you never know what's going to come out of someone's mouth. Right. So to, that also changes what I'm going to say back to them. And especially in this town, I mean, there is an expectation, isn't there, that when you go in a showroom, anything goes, which of course isn't necessarily the case. But when you start talking to people, they can say anything. Have there been moments where you wish you were just a dancer? Because people will say the strangest things, won't they? Of course. Or there's moments <laughs> where they say strange things <laughs> and then like to continue to heckle out those strange things the entire <laughs> show but I now that I've been doing it for some time you learn those very nice polite little jabs <laughs> to get them to kind of take it down a notch or two and, uh, and and once they do I think everybody else around them is very happy that I've taken that job upon myself because other people I think people forget that even though they want it they're so excited and want to say things during the show that it also bothers other people around them so there's a there's a middle place to be <laughs> as a spectator <laughs> Is this a wonderful place for you to spend your career? I mean, you're from the East Coast. You could be on Broadway if you wanted to be. You've chosen to be in Las Vegas. Is it still exciting to be in this town as a performer? Oh, I love it. I absolutely love it. Vegas is beautiful because we have we have the sun and uh, the industry here, I feel like, is large enough where there's an endless amount of work, but small enough where after you're here for a few years, you make really great friends. And I have some amazing friends that are in all different shows all over the strip. And it's super fun to go out and support them and see all their new ventures. And then to have them come support us. I just the other night, because Jubilee was such a large cast of almost 100 people. So the other night we had like 12 of our friends that hadn't seen Crazy Girls in forever. And they came and saw the show. And it was so great having all of them out there. And people forget how small Vegas is. It is one road for tourists. I know there's a big community outside of it of two million people, but for people who fly in, it's one road, a few casinos, and a few headliners, and you literally all know each other mm -hmm. because it's so small. That's beautiful. That's not even the case on Broadway or in the West End. No, not at all. Not at all. I, it, and the other thing is, as well, now that we have all these sports teams coming in and all these other things, um, for dancers, performers, uh, there's a whole gig life out here. So a lot of performers that work in shows will work what we you know, call gigs. And I get to meet new performers and also see previous 
uh, co-workers that I've performed with at all these little gig things that we pick up, whether it's a showgirl for the Golden Knights to help support, you know, Vegas hockey or, you know, a, working in a convention and uh, doing promo model stuff with four or five other girls that I danced with five years ago at Jubilee. So it's a really easy place to connect with people that uh, you have worked previous shows with and just random little gigs here and there. You're so talented and so classy and your elegance on stage is blatantly obvious. You can see your training, which is not necessarily the case with the other shows who are trying to do a similar thing. It is beautiful. Crazy girls. Go and see it at Planet Hollywood. Danny, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. I appreciate you.